welcome to the podcast, Happy and Single. I'm your host, Joseph Anderson. You can find me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy. Today is episode 108, and it's entitled Want to Find Answers in Your Life? Get Quiet and Listen. You know, it's it's interesting that the more that I've been studying about people, about this inside out, out understanding, about the type of coaching that I do now. More often than not, what really helps people is just getting quiet. We have so much thinking going through our heads all the time. Now, that's a combination, as I've said before, between the adversary, habitual thought, and just thought patterns we've created for a long time. And who knows, maybe even how we came to this earth. Like, you know, every one of us had our own personality, our own challenges, our own everything when we came to this earth. And, you know, when we came here to become better people, to progress and to grow. But we have so much thinking about what we should have done in the past or what we should do in the future or even what we should be doing in this very moment. The answers are found in the quiet. The answers are found in the silence. Whenever I want to really hear something, whenever I want to really understand something, the answer is to get quiet. There's a verse of scripture that I read in the Book of Mormon. It's in 1 Nephi 19. Or I'm sorry, 1 Nephi 10, 19. And it says, For he that diligently seeketh shall find, and the mysteries of God shall be unfolded unto them by the power of the Holy Ghost, as well in these times as in times of old, and as well in times of old as in times to come. Wherefore, the course of the Lord is one eternal round. Now, I looked up the word seeketh because I was kind of curious. What are, what are some of the other words for seeketh? And you know what one of them was? To inquire. And how do we truly inquire of God? We ask our question, but then we get quiet. It's like, for example, this morning as I was writing my book, there was a part that I was like, ah, well, here's what I want to say. And it's not really working correctly. I don't, it it sounded really forced how I had put it because I I had, there was a really clever line that I I felt that I had that I, I wanted to keep in the book. And, and I just went and I, I prayed to heavenly father as I was sitting there at my desk and he said, Hey, so here's what I'm thinking. What do you think? And he's like, Oh, do this. (laughs) And so it, it works guys. Do you know, but what normally happens is we sit there scanning for an answer. You know, I'm, I'm picturing almost like people used to do with the old radios where you had the little knob and you kept scanning and scanning for what you wanted. But the answer isn't there because it's not in your past. These answers come, I believe, directly from God. And they're fresh and they're new and they're different. I mean, especially when you receive something fresh and new that just kind of is off, like it doesn't make any sense why that came at that moment, especially if it leaves you feeling peace, do it. I mean, it's like, you know, even yesterday I was sitting here and randomly I just had this thought. There's a, there's a WordPress theme that I use called X theme. And I randomly had this thought because I've, I've bought plenty of these over the years. It's like, hey, why don't, why don't you go check out and see if they're still doing their un- unlimited deal? So you basically pay. So instead of having to pay like $100 every time I want to use this theme for a website, I went on yesterday and they had half off. They're, it's normally $500. And so I was able to buy basically infinite websites that I want to create. Like, that was really cool. It, it really was because I wasn't thinking about it. It just came to me. And now I don't have to worry about, oh, if I want to create a website, it's not, oh, is this website worthy of you know, spending a hundred bucks on? It's so cool. Yeah, I, I can create whatever websites I want now. You know, the cool part about that is I was just sitting there and I don't even remember like, you know, what I was doing. I might've been, re- oh, I think I was actually reading the scriptures if I remember right. And so, especially when we're sitting there, when we're reading the scriptures and when we have an idea come to us, especially when it leaves us feeling peace, because I believe the same way, like that God can, 
you know, has a lot of different patterns and ways he teaches us. The adversary also knows that and can mimic that, but he can never leave us feeling peace. And so, especially if you, if it leaves you feeling peace. And even yesterday when I had that impression, it was like, Hey, I, I went on and that was the very last day they were having that sale. And so it was just that, it was just that impression of what to do. And so all the time, guys, we are receiving answers, but we need to get quiet. I don't even mean physically quiet. I just mean we have so much thinking going through our heads all the time that prevents us from hearing the messages that God wants us to hear. I mean, especially right now, like as a single person, we have all kinds of messages. People are telling us, oh, you should go on more dates. You should go on less dates. You should, you know, date only the people you want to date, or you should go out with everybody. I mean, we have so many competing voices. There is only one voice that I am concerned or that I, that I desire to hear in the world. And that is the voice of the Spirit. That is the voice of the Spirit that says, hey, like this, Joseph, do this. I mean, the most amazing thing about what I'm talking about is this is everything. Because even as I'm thinking, one of, the, one of the big things behind what I teach is that everybody has innate mental, innate well-being and innate mental health. Like we are all, we all have incredible mental health. We just have a lot of scary thinking that comes in our heads. But when we get quiet, the Spirit can remind us, hey, you're okay. Relax. Breathe. I mean, just to kind of share with you guys some of the random impressions that I've gotten recently. And and I share these things with you so hopefully you can see for yourself, oh, yeah, this is... You know, I did receive that impression and I didn't recognize that that was an impression. I didn't recognize that that was a fresh insight that came from the spirit. And so a couple, a couple of the ones I've gotten recently, um, you know, one was actually for, for quite a few years I did, and I may have shared this last time, but actually not, not years, but when I was writing my book, the time that I was the most successful is when I created a reward of something that like, I don't know about you guys. I, I played uh, the Tony Hawk pro skater game a lot back in the day when I was a kid. And so the remastered version, I was so excited to play, but I, I set up a different, I used it as an incentive instead of just, Oh, I'm just going to go waste my time. And, and it's not a waste of time. Like you can, every one of us can spend our time however we want. But once you've spent that time, you can't unspend it. There, there is no going back. And so I, I, you know, I have this idea that, okay, well, you know, at first it was when I finished writing my book, the first draft, then I can play this game, but that wasn't working. And so I finally changed it and said, okay, well, Basically, whatever, whatever a third of the time that I've written, I can play. And that was kind of working. But then it's like, you know what? Let's add some time for continuity. Like if I, if I write day, the day before and the next day, cool, I get a free 21 minutes. And that one worked. That one was like, okay, even if I show up every day and write 21 minutes, which was what I promised myself to do at the beginning of this year, was that would that would even give me just using that number the 21 the free 21 minutes plus the third is you know 28 minutes to play and that was enough to keep me going and it was so exciting when i got to play this video game because it was a reward it was an incentive it wasn't just i'm just going to sit here and play all day and so recently i you know i hadn't been writing as much and it's funny when we learn new things, sometimes we kick out some of the old things that actually really were working. And so I was inspired recently to buy actually a, quite a handful of different games that were under that rule that I could only play them however much time that I, you know, that I'd written. And, you know, it's, and so it was, and it's worked. It's actually worked really well. And I've been more excited about writing and the the more that you show up and write, the better your writing is, the more um, continuous it is, and the more you want to write. So there's nothing wrong with incentivizing ourselves to do the things that we really want to do. 
Now, now coming back to this, like, what have you been inspired to do? What is it for yourself that it's been like, hey, go do this. Go do this thing. And, and why haven't you done it? What is it that stopped you from doing the thing that you felt inspired to do? You know, there was a... There was something said in, in a church talk this past week that said, sometimes we don't understand why we are asked to do certain things, but we do them because we love the Lord. No, if you happen to be a religious person, like there, there is a lot of value in that, in doing, th- in doing things because we love the Lord. You know, whatever he's directing you to do, whatever he's guiding you to do is for your best interest. And, and if that's not something that you believe in, if you believe in the universe or if you believe in something else, that's okay too. Whatever you're being impressed and inspired to do, it is coming from whatever you believe your, high pow- your higher power to be. And it is for your good. You know, so I, I've shared this before, but with the It's Possible Challenge, I struggled because, you know, I'm thinking in my head, like, well, why am I going to do this? Why, do, why is this so important that God wants me to do? And that's not the question I should be asking. The question I should be asking is, Lord, what would thou have me do? And like, if I feel inspired and that I'm supposed to do that thing, I need to show up and do that thing. The, the scripture that I love is in DNC, so that's called Doctrine and Covenants, 11. It's a book of scripture for, you know, a, a bit. And one of the things it says there is, Be ye as wise as serpents, and yet without sin, and I will order all things for your good as fast as you're able to receive them. So God is actively seeking to order our lives. But how does he do this? By giving us directions from the Spirit. But once again, what happens with most people, we are so cumbered about by so many things. You know, an impression came to me yesterday, like how many of us, um, there's a story of Mary and Martha in the Bible. And I, and I don't remember which, and I'm not going to look it up, but one of them is going about doing all of these, just being so busy, doing all kinds of things. And the other is focused on the good part. Be focused on the good part. And what is the good part? There are a million different good things to do. But the good part is the most important things that God is directing you to do in your life. It doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter what what you see along that road. You do whatever you're inspired to do. You know, sometimes that can feel, that can feel hard. You know, there's so many things that we could do. There's a zillion people that we can help. And there's all kinds of opportunities of people that need our help. And there's definitely many people that will take our help. And especially people that are really, really nice. There's many, many people that will find those, those nice people out there and use them to their advantage, but not to the nice person's advantage. So how do we know what's right for us? We get quiet. You know, the other thing that's important to remember The feeling of the spirit, it feels different than the noise of the world. It's almost like for me, I have this carousel of thought that goes through my head. Different things that it's like, oh, Joseph, you should be doing this. Oh, Joseph, you should be doing this. Oh, what about this? What about this? What about this? And you know when it usually happens? When I'm already doing the thing that God has asked and inspired me to do. Now, notice when I said that other thing about going on and buying those websites or that WordPress theme, that I checked in with the Spirit and I said, hey, is this this really what you want me to do? 
I mean, this is a decent amount of money and is this a good choice? And I checked in with the spirit and got, yes, absolutely do this. Well, God can see into the future. I mean, God is all-knowing. He can see whatever direction that you're taking in that moment of where it's going to lead you. I don't understand how all that works. But even, even you and I, like we understand that to a certain level. It's like we understand that if somebody, you know, becomes like really, really addicted to drugs or really addicted to alcohol or really addicted to any of those things, we know that that's going to have a certain effect on their life. God just has a perfect knowledge of how those things are going to affect our lives. You get to decide your life. I, I am not here to tell you how to live your life. I am here to tell you that when we listen to this inner guiding spirit, this guiding voice, Heavenly Father, whatever it is that you call it, when I listen to the Spirit, my life goes better. You know, and, and the interesting thing I said before is like, you don't have to actually physically get quiet. I can actually get in the zone because I, I have plenty of thinking that goes through my head at times also. I can get in the zone by turning up music so loud that I can't hear myself think. I mean, last night, even as I was writing my book, even this morning as I was writing my book, I just, I crank up diff different uh, playlists of soundtracks, like m just giant list of soundtracks that randomly play. And I'm able to focus. I'm able to really, really zone in because I'm trying to blast out all of that overthinking. You know, I I've shared this before, but I think this is so important. One of the names of the adversary is the great deceiver. And one of his biggest tricks is pretending that he is the spirit, pretending that he's this inner voice, but he doesn't have the same ring. It's like an, an example I'll often use with my clients is if you took a guitar and you play just a regular, a regular C chord and you play it the right way, it's going to ring. However, if I play... We'll use the F chord, for example. That's one of those that your, your finger goes all the way across the strings. And if I want to, if I just barely, like if I can't press hard enough on that chord, it will sound really bad. It will just sound clunky. That is what happens when the, the adversary is trying to deceive us. That's, that's when, and if you don't believe in that, like that's, that's fine too. I respect that. It's just, when all of that heavy, heavy thinking comes in, that's, that's a cool thought that just came to me. Like that thinking is heavy, whereas the thinking from the spirit is light. It's light. It's fresh. It's joyful. It's beautiful. It's not, oh no, I don't want to do that. And, and I shared even before how you know, one of the experiences I had when I didn't want to do something, I still felt super peaceful about it because it was the right step. When I didn't want to come back from Utah and I thought my life was just going to be in Utah forever, Heavenly Father's like, no, Joseph, you're going back home. I don't know why he did that. I mean, I still don't entirely know why he did that. But for whatever reason, that was so important. Heavenly Father knows. I just, my only job is trusting him. He is trying to lead me to a gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful life. You know, I have a picture on my vision board. I, I have a virtual vision board and, and a physical vision board too that I did many years ago, but the virtual one's newer. And on there, there is a, a picture of, there's a, a beautiful picture I have by an artist named Greg Olson called Take My Hand. And it's a picture of the Savior holding this little boy's hand it actually looks somewhat similar to me as a little child. I mean, somewhat similar, guys. Not like crazy similar. Um, and it's a reminder to me that God is consistently inviting me to take his hand. And he's trying to lead me to an amazing place. It's up to me if I decide to listen. I have that choice. 
And guys, every one of us, we, we get off this track all the time. Every one of us. So if you're sitting there and thinking, oh my goodness, Joseph, you always, always listen to the Spirit and your life is amazing and incredible and etc. Like, guys, I am, I am just like you. There are times that I listen and there are times that I don't. The times that I listen, I do a lot better. The times that I don't, I don't do so well. But every one of you, God is trying to take you and lead you by the hand to the most amazing life you could ever begin to imagine. You get to decide if you're going to listen. You know, back to this thing about listening and what I was saying earlier about scanning. Your answers are not found in your mind. I mean, I guess, you know, like, I was just thinking of, you know, some of those detective shows and such where, you know, they they look a certain way and they find what they're looking for. Yeah, I mean, maybe if you're looking for something that actually has happened in the past, maybe if you're looking for, like, to remember something, okay, maybe. Yeah, those, those things can be brought to our minds. But new answers and fresh answers are not found in the same clump of old files. I mean, even then, like there's so many files in our brain. It's just, it's it's astounding. It's massive. And I, I love the term that, you know, the spirit enlightens us. I mean, think about light. Think about lighter. Like when things are lighter, they just feel fresh. They feel happy. They feel bouncy for lack of better words there's just a joy so if something's coming through that feels heavy it is not from god i mean i and i don't know maybe there might be exceptions to that but at least in my understanding of that you know god's news and you you put one o in there and it's good news good news comes from god and it leaves us feeling peaceful and joy and joyful. If it's not leaving you feeling peaceful and joyful, it, it might not be for you. It doesn't matter how amazing advice or who it came from. I've had very well-meaning people give me very poor advice. And you know, as, like I said, especially as single people, there's so many decisions you got to make. But the best thing to do about anything is just to counsel with the Lord. You know, one of the things that I did, I I served a special, I served a mission for my church in Brazil, but then there was a special performing mission I served in Nauvoo. And one of the things I love to do after I'd, like, at night, is just sit on my bed and talk with God. Literally just talk with Heavenly Father. And for whatever reason, I started doing this again a few nights ago, like just sitting on my bed and talking with God. I mean, he wants to talk to each of us. He really does care about you. He really does love you. The quickest way to happiness is to greater connect with God and also do those things that you love. Because the more we're connected to him, the less we think or care about what is happening in the world. God desires to bless each of you. He wants you to go to him and tell him your your hopes and your dreams and your worries and your fears. He doesn't want to be a faceless God. He wants to be a part of your life. And the more we go to him, the more we talk with him and see him and listen to him talking with us, the more he becomes uh, like... I don't know the opposite of faceless. I mean, a, a God with a face? Like, the, I mean, he is our heavenly father. Like, a, le- a legitimate, real heavenly father. And every one of us were created in his image. The, the adversary the, builds up and brings up so much noise in our heads to prevent us from hearing him. You know, I was thinking this morning, for whatever reason, I was randomly looking at something of, you know, a particular soccer player in the World Cup, and he happens to be married to a soap opera star. And the thought just came to me. It's like all the 
everything in TV programs and life is built on conflict. It's built on this energy of, I mean, especially if you've ever watched even a half a minute of a minute of a soap opera, that's not really my thing, but I, but I have seen a few minutes of them before and it's like, no, you did this. No, you did this. I'm not saying that, you know, you can't watch that. It's just not my cup of tea. You know, everybody's got their own stuff they watch. But one thing that did really occur to me is how much it's built on conflict, how much it's built on contention. And like the more noise we have in our heads, the harder it is to hear the spirit. But when you get quiet and when you listen and and coming back to this analogy again about not searching in this, like you're not going to find it in your head. It's going to come from a new place. It's, I, I almost picture it. And guys, it doesn't really happen like this for me. So please don't think that. But I almost picture it like a beam of light over your head and it, it gives you the answer. Like, I mean, that's one of the pictures, but like, that's, like I said, that's not how it works for me. But it's not coming from within us. It's coming from outside of us. The answer is coming from outside of us. It's coming from God. We, we say we're looking for an answer. Stop looking for an answer. Start listening for an answer. That's where all the answers come from, guys. All you have to do is listen. So let's say, for example, if I'm... And also, we got to get more specific on our questions when we're listening. You know, if I'm asking Heavenly Father for, you know, guidance and direction, well, I'll just use a simple example back to my book. Then I kind of share with him, hey, this is, what I'm, this is what I'm trying to accomplish with this part. You know, I'm trying to make this transition or I'm trying to, you know, this morning it was like, I really want to include this really funny line about, you know, women having amazingly powerful intuitions but it seems forced. How, how can I make this work? And then he gives you an idea. He's like, well, you know, do this. Oh, okay. And then it works. Guys, it really does work that way. But we have so much noise going on our head, we can't hear it. You just have to be still. Like the scripture itself says, be still and know that I am God. We have to just be still and the answers will come through. So I want to talk about how do we practice this? How can we actually make this a part of our lives? And, and the thought comes to me of taking a question that you have. So I, I don't know what your question is, but taking that question to him and just saying, hey, this is the question that I have. And then emptying your mind to the best of your ability. And, you know, one, one way to kind of do that is just you can take deep breaths. You can, I mean, there's a lot of ways. This is kind of borderline meditation. But you can just take whatever question you have and say, hey, this is the question I have. This is what I'm thinking. What do, what do you think? And then get quiet. And as you get quiet, he'll be able to talk to you. He'll be able to share with you what he wants you to know. Because he really does care about you. He really does want you to be happy. So, so again, you know, take that question to him and say, well... <laughs> so one example might be, you know, Heavenly Father, how can I connect with more of the people that I'd really, really like to date, that I'd really like to connect with, that I'd really like to go out with. And then get quiet and listen. And, and when something new and fresh comes through, you'll know. You'll feel it. And when old thought comes through or just those old heavy thoughts, just let them pass through the same way you would if you were you know, if, if you were in the middle of a train station and all these trains were passing through, every one of us has millions of trains of thoughts going through our head all day long, every day. You don't have to worry about them. You don't have to pay attention to them. 
Once something comes through new and fresh, you will know. You will feel it. And, and if this is something you're, you really haven't been practiced or you're not really used to, guys, I run a free call a few, times, a few times a month. Feel free to come on there. These calls last about 50 to 55 minutes and you can come on. You can ask me anything. If you don't know how to get in tune to listen, come talk to me. I, I, I'm glad to help you, especially like I, I love helping people get more in tune with this. Because this is a game changer. This is what changes our lives. And if you just go to the happynsingle.com website, they've got the whole schedule up there for the month and everything else. That. But what is it that you have been inspired to do in this episode today? What is it that, that has felt real to you? Like what other ways have, what are the times that you've been most in tune? with the spirit and what are the impressions that you've been given today that you need to go start doing or stop doing and then go do those i came across one final quote that i wanted to share that i thought was really cool it's by a sydney banks the scottish mystic it says when the answers are complicated it's the intellect when the answers are simple it's the spirit And here's another. Limitation is always illusion. Relax. Stay still. Wait until the wisdom talks to you as it will. So even now, as long as you're not driving, I just invite you even to take a few minutes to just sit and be still and be quiet and listen and see what comes through. Now, if you've made it to this point in the podcast, I'd like to invite you to go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. I don't know how you got here, but that way, if you ever want to get back here again, it's right there for you in your subscriptions. And if you haven't already joined us, one of the really cool things that I do that's free for anyone that would like to participate is each Monday morning at 10 a.m. Arizona time, I host a group coaching call for Happy and Single. Anyone is welcome to come on. And you can even receive a little bit of one-on-one coaching time with me, depending on how many people are in the call. Now, every now and then that schedule changes. So you can go to the website happynsingle.com to be able to look at the schedule and also to be able to find the link to the Zoom room. Now, at the same time, if you would prefer a more one-on-one type of coaching experience where you can sit down and share your hopes and dreams and, and just kind of the stuff going on in your world. Then there's another option available for you as well. Now, the bulk of my business is actually doing one-on-one coaching. If that's something you're interested in exploring, I've got a few spots open in my coaching practice. You can just message me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy, and we can sit down and have a chat. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the world. I've worked with people across the world. I do everything over Zoom, so it actually makes it pretty easy. Thank you guys so much again for listening. And go out and live your adventure. Thank you.